Hey, what is up everyone? This is Peter and welcome to vlog number six. And today we're gonna jump straight into talking about lighting and a couple of other bonus tips at the end. Okay, so just like your eyes need light to see, uh, your camera needs light to capture the image. Without getting too technical and geeky, let me just explain as in simple terms as possible. Your eye, for example, has a retina in the back. So the, the light or the image comes comes through your lens and then it goes gets focused and then the image goes onto your retina and then it gets sent to your brain. Now that retina is like an image sensor. In the same way your camera, your digital camera has something called an image sensor. It's made out of technology. <laughs> Basically cheaper cameras have cheaper technology, more expensive cameras have very expensive technology that went into making those image sensors. Now the cheaper cameras need a lot more light to hit the image sensor for the image quality to be nice. Very expensive cameras can get away with very little light or low light in order for the image to be very crisp and clear. Now the good news is if you're just getting into vlogging and you're trying to do it on a very low budget, you can get away with a cheaper quality camera or even a phone camera as long as you have lots of great quality light. And by great quality, I'm talking about ultimately natural daylight. Okay, so if you're outdoors, sunlight. So in the last vlog, I mentioned the kind of lights that I, that I use, they're called soft boxes. And I picked them up on eBay for about 60 or $70. These are special lights, each of them have four globes. They're called daylight and they try to simulate uh, daylight as close as possible. That's as technical as I'm gonna get because you can go into all the Kelvins and all that kind of stuff. The next kind of light you could buy for your uh, lighting setup is something called paper lanterns. And you can pick these up from Ikea. They probably cost around $10 to $20. Again, with these kind of lights, they're covered by, so the paper material outside diffuses the light that's inside. And with these kind of lights, you need to make sure that the globe inside is quite uh, bright, high wattage. And the only downside to paper lantern lights is that the kind of light could be yellow or it could be a different kind of fluoro light. It can affect the color of your skin. So before when I was talking about those daylight uh, soft boxes, that tries to maintain the color of your skin and uh, to a as neutral as possible. When you're using other light globes in say, for example, your paper lantern, it can really change the tint of the light and it's very subtle. It can sometimes make you look very pale. It's one of those things you really have to test it and try out different globes. The last type of cheaper alternative lighting that you can get is something called work lights. There are halogen work lights that you can buy from Bunnings or Masters or if you're in America, Home Depot, you can pick them up for around about 20, 30 bucks. Now, if you're gonna use these lights, make sure that you don't point them directly at you because they're very intense and they'll just cause lots of shadows and it's not very desirable on camera. So the way you use these lights on camera is to shine the lights on a white styrofoam board and then direct that reflection of that light onto yourself. So just look at that image and you can see how, the, see how you're in the middle and you've got the two work lights, for example, pointing uh, at the white styrofoam board and then the reflection from that white styrofoam board hits your face. It's nicer, it's diffused. The only downside to these work lights is that the light can be very yellow and again, it can affect the change the color of your skin. So yeah, it's but again, it's a cheap solution. It can get you working and it's all about using your camera well. If it's a cheap camera, these kind of lights will give you lots of light so that the quality of the image is nice. Now, before I go, I wanna give you a quick bonus tip and it has to do with something that happened to me a couple of days ago. I turned my camera on and it wouldn't turn on and I was kind of heartbroken. I thought, oh no, did my camera cake itself? cake itself? Um, did my camera cark itself? And um, I was pr quite prepared to, you know, run contingency plans and use my mobile phone as the camera. But after a bit of fiddling around, I realized why my camera wouldn't turn on. It's because my flash card, the little memory card was uh, screwed. I had to format my memory card and put it back into the camera and it worked. So I formatted the 
the memory card on my computer and then I put it back into my camera and it worked fine. So what's the takeaway? Before you remove your flash disks or USB disks or even your backup disks from your computer, make sure that you eject it properly because otherwise you'll stand the chance of losing a lot of data if you haven't backed it up somewhere else. Luckily, I did back up my uh, images and my uh, videos, so I was fine to format everything. So that's just a takeaway. Just be careful when you remove any storage from your computer, make sure you eject it properly. So that's all for now, Number vlog number six. Uh, stay tuned for the next vlog. I'll be sharing some more tips for entrepreneurs getting into vlogging. And if you found this vlog useful and of high value content, then feel free to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and share it with all your friends on Twitter and Facebook and all that. And remember to Together, we are better.